Hey yo, good evening viewers of the tube. My name is Tyler and welcome to the channel some people call the Sherlock Holmes of cryptocurrency because we investigate and dig up what the big players in the industry have meant to keep hidden. Well, let's make this shiznit elementary, my dear Watsons, because it's time for Chico Crypto. Tether and Bitfinex. It's a topic on everyone's mind right now and for good reason. Last week it was announced that the Bitfinex company itself was under investigation by the New York office of the Attorney General. The New York AG wants to take a closer look into Bitfinex's suite of interrelated companies, including its umbrella firm iFinex and Tether Holdings Limited. The main reason for this was the supposed ongoing fraud to the tune of $850 million. So what did the New York AG find? From a 2018 investigative subpoena, they allege that Bitfinex used funds from Tether to mask some $850 million in losses of customer funds, resulting from potential theft or mismanagement by payment processor Crypto Capital Corporation. So let's rewind a bit and see how this all came into play. Let me tell you, this goes deep, with many major players in the industry all involved. In 2012, iFinex, which is the parent company to both Tether Holding Limited and Bitfinex, is founded in Hong Kong, as seen from this Bloomberg document on the company. What's weird is there's no logo to be found online for iFinex, and the only details I could find was the Bloomberg documentation. In 2013, Bitfinex incorporates in Hong Kong, and the company is run by CEO Jean Ludovicius Vanderveld, CFO Giancarlo Devancini, and CSO Philip Potter. In July of 2014, Brock Pierce announces Realcoin, a crypto backed by US dollar value. Realcoin is built on Mastercoin, which is now called Omni, and this is a protocol that runs on top of Bitcoin. Then in September of 2014, Bitfinex operators set up Tether Limited in the British Virgin Islands, but they tell the public that Bitfinex and Tether are completely separate. The only reason we find out they aren't is because of the Paradise Papers leaks. In November of 2014, Realcoin rebrands to Tether and they announce several partners, including Bitfinex. No one knows the details of what went down, if Brock Pierce sold it all or was cut in on the deal. But according to documents, Tether Holdings Limited was the owner of Tether. From this documentation on Pierce, we can see Brock did sell Tether, but also founded Noble Markets. Who is Noble Markets? We will find out that in a second. In February of 2015, Tether begins trading. And throughout 2015 and 2016, the amount of USDT in circulation remains relatively flat. Although issues with Bitfinex start to arise. In May of 2015, Bitfinex loses 1,500 Bitcoin, worth 400 grand at the time. Bitfinex indicates it will absorb all the losses. Then in June of 2016, the US CFTC finds Bitfinex for offering illegal off exchange commodity transactions in Bitcoin and other cryptos. Because of this, Bitfinex moves their funds from one master account into a multi-signature wallet protected by BitGo. Then in August of 2016, Bitfinex is hacked for 120,000 Bitcoins, worth nearly $75 million at the time. The details of the hack are never fully revealed, but BitGo denies that its servers were ever breached. In response, Bitfinex socializes its losses from the theft by announcing a 36% haircut for almost all its customers. In return, the customers receive BFX tokens, initially valued at $1 each. The tokens can be traded or used to buy shares in iFinex, the parent company of Bitfinex. This is when shit really starts to hit the fan because people start to wonder if they are insolvent. In August of 2016, they announced they have hired Ledger Labs, a blockchain forensic firm, to investigate the theft and complete a financial audit. The public never sees the results of the investigation, and months later, Bitfinex admits they never hired Ledger Labs to perform the audit to begin with. 
in March of 2017, Wells Fargo, the last bank willing to process Bitfinex transactions, cuts off all services to Bitfinex and Tether from its Taiwanese banking partners. Due to this, Bitfinex and Tether needed new banking partners, so they went back to their old buddy Brock Pierce and utilized Noble Bank of Puerto Rico, owned by Noble Markets, which was founded by Brock Pierce. This was just when the market started to heat up and the Tether printer started to go wild. As we can see from this chart of Tether's market cap, just as they lost their major banking partners and went with Noble Bank, the market cap started exploding, as well as the volume. How do we know they went with Noble? Well, data was released from Puerto Rico's Commissioner of Financial Institutions for year end of 2017. Bank deposits in the international finance entities category, of which only two banks in Puerto Rico fall into, including Noble Bank, exploded by 248% to $3.3 billion in the fourth quarter of 2017, as seen from this chart. What happened to Tether's market cap? It went from just over 48 million in March of 2017 to over 1.2 billion by the end of 2017. And if we take a look at this chart, the printing of Tether seemed to correlate with rises in the Bitcoin price. Just 10 million here, 20 million here, another 100 million there. How about Tether printing everywhere? Then, as we know, the Bitcoin and crypto markets imploded. And as Tether traders started to unload their tokens, Noble Bank became desperate for fiat funding to really keep the gig going. But Tether and Bitfinex wouldn't rely on one banking partner. They needed multiple. So enter Crypto Capital Corp, who is now accused of losing $850 million, and another, Global Trading Solutions, which was able to get them an account with HSBC. But we will get into that later. Crypto Capital is a Panamanian-based financial services company that falsely claims to be a bank. They have extremely shady banking partners like Global Transaction Services Limited Hong Kong, who are known scammers, as well as working with some shady Polish banks. I have included the document which shows exactly why these banking partners are scammers, and I would break it down, but that would be a whole entire video in itself. Now, Crypto Capital and Coinapult announce a partnership as seen from Coinapult's website. Coinapult started as a simple way to send Bitcoin through email and SMS, but attempted to become some sort of exchange. The ties between the two are close. They have offices right next to each other, and Crypto Capital's internal technology was created by Coinapult. Coinapult created an interesting feature called LoxTM, which allowed holders of Bitcoin on Coinapult to lock down their Bitcoin USD value. This LoxTM feature used Tether tokens to account for who owns what in USD value. The USD values are claimed by Coinapult and insured by Crypto Capital and their shady banking partners. Now, Coinapool abandoned their retail services to concentrate on business-to-business -business relationships. Even in 2017, if you tried an open account, they would instruct you to fund your account via crypto capital. Yet, when people tried to apply with them, they were totally ignored. Suspicious? Oh, hell yes it is. Well, Coinapult then integrated their LoxTM feature with Mycelium, a popular Bitcoin wallet, and another exchange, Cephalo. Guess who is a major investor in Coinapult and Cephalo, thus being involved with crypto capital? Roger Ver, as seen from this list of his investments. Let's listen in to this AMA Roger did in December of 2017, when he is asked if he thinks Tether would hold its value in a crash. Uh, she says, in a huge market crash, do I think uh, Tether would hold its one-to-one -one US dollar uh, value? Um, I don't know. I know I've seen lots and lots of posts uh, on the internet here talking about Tether and how it's, there's a bunch of problems there. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about it. Uh, I tend to try to not yell fire if, if, if I, I don't know that there is a fire. Um, there definitely seems to be some smoke and lots of people saying things. But uh, at the same time, I know firsthand just what it's like to be attacked online with people saying things that aren't true. So uh, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Do, do your own research. Um, in a huge market crash, I think Tether, if the market crashes with cryptos in general, I think Tether probably would hold its one-to-one -one value unless Bitfinex itself or the company behind Tether 
itself were to be attacked or, or in trouble in some way. And then and if that was the case, then I don't think it would hold that value. So, um, um, and lots of people were replying saying they also want to hear my thoughts on Tether. So uh, the short answer is I, I don't really know, to be honest. So a bit of a nervous reply and with roger highly invested into cefalo and coinapole using their lock pm feature he should have one of the best views into crypto capitals operations yet he is playing like he doesn't know jack shit. another interesting thing is around this time he launched bitcoin cash and he transferred 40k bitcoin to bitcoin cash via bitfinex maybe roger knew more back then than he was publicly admitting and we can't trust Ver one bit. It's just like when he said he saw Mt. Gox's bank statements and they were fully solvent as seen here. I'm Roger Veer, longtime Bitcoin advocate and investor. Today I'm at the Mt. Gox World Headquarters in Tokyo, Japan. I had a nice chat with Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpelis about their current situation. He showed me multiple bank statements as well as letters from banks and lawyers. I'm sure that all the current withdrawal problems at Mt. Gox are being caused by the traditional banking system, not because of a lack of liquidity at Mt. Gox. The traditional banking partners that Mt. Gox needs to work with are not able to keep up with the demands of the growing Bitcoin economy. The dozens of people that make up the Mt. Gox team are hard at work establishing additional banking partners that eventually will make dealing with Mt. Gox easier for all their customers around the world. For now, I hope everyone will continue working on Bitcoin projects that will help make the world a better place. So here we are today with Bitfinex, Tether, Crypto Capital. They are all involved in a critical moment. There is 850 million missing. And just recently in March of 2019, Ifinex borrowed 900 million from Tether. Then 853 million new Tethers have been injected into the markets. What do you think they are doing? Buying Bitcoin, pushing the price up, selling the Bitcoin for USD so they can pay back the missing 850 million. It's obvious. And with the New York AG now investigating, things will come to light. And actually things are starting to get real sunny. Just yesterday, Reginald Fowler and Ravid Yosef have been charged in connection with providing shadow banking services to crypto exchanges. Their company, Global Trading Solutions. And as we can see from the indictment, Global Trading Solutions is named. So this relates to Tether and the Bitfinex case. Now, this fallout could be about as damaging to the markets as it gets. All the players involved could be in cuffs soon. Vanderveld, Potter, Davincini, Pierce, Ver. But new players could also face repercussions, like Justin Sun, who is issuing Tether on the Tron blockchain but also the exchange that should not be named, who is the largest holder of Tether. Let's finish the show by hearing what their CEO had to say about Tether before all this came out. Uh, because I think it was part of the community, we need to, uh, we need to do this together. Absolutely. Very, very interesting to see the inside perspective of how these kind of situations get dealt with. I know NEM, the NEM team, for example, obviously had a very big hack um, carried out on an exchange recently and a big portion of NEM tokens were stolen. So we're going to come to NEM in a few minutes, though. Now, I did want to ask you as well, there's been a lot of accusations made against the guys over at Tether. How do you feel about that situation? What What are your thoughts on it? Um, my general feeling is that there's always more FUD in the community than there are positive things. So and the FUD is usually more, <laughs> usually more overreactive. Um, I did meet with the key guy from Bitfinex in person a few days, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we did talk about this issue. And there was a couple of other guys who I trust to a fairly high degree. They said they have looked at the accounts. I personally have not looked at the bank accounts for uh, USD Tether. Uh, the other two guys, um, and one of them is another exchange head, it's a separate exchange, uh, said they looked at the bank account and the money is there. So that's what they said. I don't know. Um, so. But uh, I'm actually much more worried about the banking relationship than the actual funds. Uh, because even if you have the funds there, if the bank doesn't allow you to move money, then mm -hmm. you're still stuck. So um, yeah, but either way, uh, we are fully supportive of uh, what um, other uh, people are doing. So uh, we support Tether our exchange. And given that we're already supported, uh, we want to help them ease any problem or fix any problem they, they encounter. Uh, we want to help ensure that uh, they're... 
Sneaky, sneaky CZ. Sounds like he was meeting with the heads on a consistent basis and knows more than he lets on. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.